what I want to do in this video is get a little bit of practice trying to approximate the area under curves and also get a little bit more familiarity with sigma notation in this context. So what we have here, we have the graph of f of x is equal to 1 plus 0.1x squared. That's this curve right over here. And then we have these rectangles that are trying to approximate the area under the curve, the area under the function f between x equals 0 and x equals 8. And the way that this diagram, or the way that we're attempting to do it, is by splitting it into four rectangles. And so we could call this rectangle 1, this is rectangle 2, rectangle 3, and rectangle 4. And each of their heights, let's see, they're the interval, it looks like they each have a width of 2, so they are equally spaced. So we go from 0 to 8, and we split into four sections, so each has a width of two, so they're each going to be two wide. So that's two, that's two, that's two, that's two. And their height seems to be based on, their height seems to be based on the midpoint. So between the start, between the left side and the right side of the rectangle, you take the value of the function at, at the middle value right over here. So for example, this height right over here looks like f of one. This height right over here looks like f of three. This height of this rectangle is f of five. This height right over here is f of seven. So given the way that this has been constructed, and we want to take the sum of the areas of these rectangles as an approximation under, as the area under this curve, how would we write that as sigma notation? And I'll get us started, and then I encourage you to pause the video and try to finish it. So the, the, sum, of these, the sum of these rectangles, we could say it's the sum of, so we'll have n equals one to four, because we have four rectangles. And I encourage you to, and I encourage you to, to finish this up. Once, actually just write it in terms of the function. Use function notation. You don't have to write it out as one plus 0.01 times something squared. So I'm assuming you've had a go at it. So for each of these, so for the first, so for the first rectangle over here, we're going to multiply two times the height. So the height right over here is one, and this is the first rectangle, so you might be tempted to say times f of n. But then that breaks down as we go into the second rectangle. The second rectangle, the two still applies. This two is the width of the rectangle. But now we want to multiply it times f of three, not f of two. So this f of n isn't going to, this f of n isn't going to, isn't going to pass muster. And so let's see, let's see how we want to think about it. So when n is, so when n is one, two, three, four, we're going to take f of, so f of n, or not, I should say f of n, we're going to take f of something. So here, this first one, we're going to take f of one. Then here, for the second rectangle, we're taking f of three, f of three for the height. For the third rectangle, we're taking f of five f of five, and then so for the fourth rectangle, we're taking f of seven, f of seven. So what's the relationship over here? Let's see, it looks like if you multiply by two and subtract one, so two times one minus one is one, two times two minus one is three, two times three minus five, two times three minus one is five, two times four minus one is seven. So this is two n minus one. So the area of each of these rectangles, the base is two, and the height is f of two n minus, f of two n minus one. And so that's, that hopefully makes it a little bit clear, kind of mapping between the sigma notation and, and what we're actually trying to do. And now let's just, just for fun, let's actually try to evaluate this thing. What is this thing going to evaluate to? Well, this is going to evaluate to two times f of, when n is equal to one, this is one, f of one, plus two times, when n is two, this is gonna be f of two times two minus one is three, f of three. But when n is three, this is gonna be two times f of five. When n is four, this is going to be two times, two times f of seven. Four times two minus one is seven, f of seven. And so that is going to be, well, we're going to have to evaluate a bunch of these things over here. So let me actually, let me clear this out so I have a little bit more real estate. I'm feeling this might get a little bit messy now. 
So this is going to be, actually we could factor out a two. So this is going to be equal to two times f of one is one plus 0.1 times one squared. So it's one plus 0.1, so it's one point, let me color code it a little bit just so we can keep track of things. So this right over here is 1.1. One one. So z one plus 0.1 is 1.1. One one. This right over here, f of three, so that's one plus 0.1 times three squared nine. So one plus 0.9, so one plus, so it's 1.9. And then, let's see, this one right over here, f of five, that's gonna be one plus, see five squared is 25, times 0.1 is 2.5. So one plus 2.5 is gonna be 3.5. And then finally, f, finally f of seven, f of seven is going to be one plus 0.1 times seven squared. So this is 49 times 0.1. 49 times 0.1 is 4.9 plus one, so plus 5.9 plus 5.9. And so what is this going to be equal to? So let's see, 1.1 plus 1.9, these two are going to sum up to be equal to three. And then these two are going to sum up to be, let's see, if we take, if we add the five, we get to 8.5, and then we add the 0.9, we get to 9.4. So plus 9.4, did I do that right? Three plus five is, Eight, five point five plus point nine is one point four. Yep, and so this is going to be. So once again, we have the two times it all. So this is going to be equal to two times twelve point four, which is equal to twenty four point eight, which is our approximation. Once again, this is just an approximation using these rectangles of the area under the curve between x equals zero and x equals eight.